How's it going, everybody? We are going to get started on chapter 8.6, which is using quadratic techniques to solve polynomial equations. And so I created a reference page here called Easy Reference, and we're just going to factor and solve each of these equations. And so let's go ahead and just take care of this number one here. This is really factorable and it's easy to factor. It's x plus 4 times x plus 3 equals 0. And by virtue of the zero product property, we know that x equals negative 4 and x equals negative 3. Second problem, same thing. We're going to go ahead and factor this thing. It's going to be x minus 3 times x plus 9. And then again, zero product property says that x equals 3 and then x equals negative 9. All right. And then the last problem, it's going to be x minus 8 times x minus 4, therefore x equals 4 and 8. Oops, I kind of did that backwards, but you get the idea. So what made these problems factorable? Let's go ahead and blow up one of the problems and find out. If I take a look at the third problem here, x squared minus 12x plus 32, the thing that makes it factorable is that I have an exponent of 2 here, and I really have an exponent of 1 on my middle term. And so the distance between my front running term and my middle term is always 1 half. Right? Half of 2 is 1. And that's what makes this trinomial factorable. So we've got to keep that in mind when we get on to something a little more difficult, which is what today's lesson is. And so understanding how to get things in terms of x squared is going to be very beneficial to you into this new stuff when we look at a problem like, say, x to the fourth minus 17x squared plus 16 equals 0. Now, in your book, they might ask you, is, can you use a quadratic technique on this problem? Well, in this case, we can because my, my leading exponent is 4. My middle exponent is 2, and since half of 4 is 2, I am able to do it. So I'm going to rewrite my first term in terms of some type of x squared. So what I need is I'm going to write, oops, I'm going to write this as x squared squared. What I did was I took half of 4 and made it 2, and then I put a 2 on the outside, because I know that when I raise power to a power, I get x to the fourth, right? Because we multiply our powers when we have power raised to a power. The negative 17x squared is going to stay the same, and then plus 16 is going to stay the same. And so now I'm going to, and again, you knew how to do this one. You knew how to do this one, which means this one you should know how to do. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create my two bubbles. and you want to pay attention to the outer exponent, the outer exponent, this one. And so what we have is we have x squared and x squared, right? Just like factoring this polynomial here, we have x squared and x squared, and all I need are two numbers that multiply to 16 and add to 17 at the same time. That's a piece of cake. It's x equals, whoops. Not that, x equals 16 and x equals 1. Or rather, x squared minus 16 and x squared minus 1. I don't know what I was saying there. Sorry. From here, there are a couple of ways you can solve this. Because remember, you're not done with this problem yet. You're going to either factor again x minus 4 times x plus 4 equals 0. Or you can solve this as an equation, x squared minus 1 equals 0. I'll go ahead and do both methods, that way you know that they're both sound. In this case, x equals 4 and negative 4. We know that from zero product property. From here, I'm going to add 1 to both sides. x squared equals 1. I'm going to take the square root of both sides, and x equals plus or minus 1. Either way, I ended up with the same answer. All right, let's go ahead and do another example of this. Again, always reference back to the easy chart. You knew how to do the left side. Now we can do the right side. Let's make it a little bit harder. If I give you example two here, if I say x to the 1 half minus 
8x to the 1 fourth plus 15 equals 0. First thing you have to determine is can this polynomial you, uh, be utilized in a quadratic technique? Well, we look at the relationship between the first exponent and the second exponent. Is 1 fourth half of 1 half? It is. All right, 1 fourth is definitely half of 1 half. This is 0 0.5, this is 0 0.25, you know, it's going to have that relationship. So I need to write x to the 1 half in terms of a thing being squared. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to write it in terms of x to the 1 fourth squared minus 8x to the 1 fourth plus 15 equals 0. Now, if you're not sure as to how this relationship was found, if you divide 1 half divided by 2, that's the same thing as 1 half times 1 half, which is 1 fourth, which is what I have inside my parentheses here. If I take 1 fourth times 2, I get 1 half again. So the problem hasn't changed. Let's go ahead and set this equal to 0. Again, I take whatever's inside the parentheses and I split it apart. Just like over here, it's the same thing. And now all I need are two numbers that multiply to 15 and add to negative 8. Well, that's negative 3 and negative 5. Now, if you want, you can try and foil this back again to see if you get this polynomial. You will get it. So from here, let's go and use the zero product property. Now, in this case, the temptation is to say, oh, x equals 3, x equals 5. That's not true. It's actually x to the 1 fourth minus 3 equals 0, and x to the 1 fourth minus 5 equals 0. Bear in mind, that's what you were doing all the way over here on the easy stuff, but because it was so easy, you could just do it in your head. Now I'm going to go ahead and actually do the problem so that you guys can see how it is solved. x to the 1 fourth equals 3. To cancel out this 1 fourth, I'm going to raise everything to the fourth power to get x equals 81. Again, x to the 1 fourth equals 5. I'm going to raise everything to the fourth power to get rid of this 1 fourth, get x by itself. x equals 5 to the fourth power is 625. All right? Quadratic techniques. They're pretty neat. I like them. Which means you should too. Okay, let's do another example here. Example 3. If I give you x minus 2 rad x minus 3 equals 0, don't be intimidated by the square root sign. The reason why you guys learned rational exponents before getting here is so that you can convert if you need to. Rad x is really x to the 1 half power, and that's minus 3 equals 0. Do we have a quadratic relationship? 1, 1 half. Of course we have a quadratic relationship. So let's go ahead and rewrite our leading term in terms of a quadratic. This is really x to the 1 half squared, right, because if I take 1 half and multiply it by 2, I get back to 1, minus 2x to the 1 half minus 3 equals 0. Let's go ahead and split this part. It's x to the 1 half on the inside here, x to the 1 half on the inside here, and then I need two numbers that multiply to 3 and add to 2, that's 3 and 1, I need to figure out the order of the signs so that I can create a negative 2. That would be negative 3, positive 1. So let's be careful here. x to the 1 half minus 3 equals 0. So x to the 1 half equals 3. And so if I square everything to get rid of this, I get x equals 9. Awesome. x to the 1 half plus 1 equals 0. I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides x to the 1 half equals negative 1. So let's think about that statement for a second. This is like saying the square root of x is going to give me a negative number. Well, that can't be true. You cannot take the square root of anything and get a negative number to be output, which means your only answer in this problem is x equals 9. Okay, let's move on. The easy reference can go away now because we're moving on to something a little bit different. Okay, let's take a look at number 5 here. It's x to the third plus 64 equals 0. 
Now, I know the temptation would be to just subtract 64 from both sides. You get x to the third equals negative 64, cube root, and so x equals negative 4. That's all fine and dandy. The problem with this is that all you have found is the real or rational root. Bear in mind, with chapter 8, we're learning about irrational and complex roots. So in order to find the other two roots, we found one of them. There's two more by virtue of the third exponent. We need to actually use an old friend for this. And the old friend is little bro, big bro. So inside little bro, it's x plus 4. It gets one of each thing. So while we're at it, why don't we just go ahead and recap a little bro, big bro. x to the third is really x to the third. 64 is really 4 to the third. And so remember, little bro gets one of everything. So it's x plus 4. And when I take one of everything, I have 2 left. So big bro gets everything else. I get x squared on the inside here. I get 16 on the inside here. And then... The middle term is going to be little bro multiplied, and the symbols always go opposite little bro, always positive. So here, in little bro, x equals negative 4. Well, we know that. We got that here. As tempting as it is, you can't factor this. So let's take a look at our terms. We've got an x squared, a negative 4x, and a 16. I'm going to go ahead and use completing the square. So I'll go x squared minus 4x. I'm going to leave myself some space. I'm going to subtract 16 from both sides. I'm going to add the box to both sides. Inside the box goes a negative 2. So what I get is x minus 2 quantity squared equals, this becomes a 4. Negative 16 plus 4 is negative 12. I'm going to square root both sides, canceling those out. x minus 2 equals plus or minus the square root of 2, uh, the, rather the square root of 12 is plus or minus 2i rad 3. And now I'm going to go ahead and add 2 to both sides. So what I get is x equals 2 plus or minus 2i rad 3, which is my complex root, and my real root, or my rational root, is negative 4. Alright, let's do another little bro, big bro solving problem. All right, last problem, number six. If I say x to the third minus 27 equals zero, again, I'm going to go little bro, big bro on it to find all the roots. x to the third is x to the third minus 27 is 3 to the third. So I'm going to get x minus 3 on the inside of little bro. Big bro gets x squared and a 9 and a 3x, and they're both positive because little bro signs go opposite little bro, positive. So x equals 3, that's a no-brainer. For here, since I have an odd number as my center term, I'll go ahead and use the quadratic formula. So this is x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Let's go ahead and simplify the inside of this thing. This is 9 minus 36 which is negative 27. If I take the square root of that, I will end up with 3i rad 3. So what I have is negative 3 plus or minus 3i rad 3 over 2. And those are my two complex roots, and my real root is 3. Okay, that just about does it for this section. We'll see you next time.